Welcome to the Dealing with Goliath podcast. The mission of Dealing with Goliath is to sharpen the psychological edge in business leaders with skin in the game who want to be more effective under pressure, uncover hidden value, and increase profitability. Revealing gems and resources from experts across the business spectrum. The format this is the double espresso shot of insight to boost business performance using our intense five questions in nine minutes format. I'm your host, Al McBride, a coach, facilitator, trainer, and creator of the Goliath Negotiation Method. Our guest today on the show is Dr. Nancy Yonker. Nancy Yonker, PhD, has over 31 years of experience in the leadership transformation space and has mentored over 220 leaders on five different continents. A large portion of her work has focused on helping business partners and leaders remove roadblocks that have kept them stuck. She is the founder of the Audacious Leaders MO, a program that helps business owners achieve their goals by mastering their mindset, leveraging their signature strengths and skillfully communicating with their partners and teams. Welcome, Nancy. Great to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Al. What a privilege to be here. It's brilliant to have you. So let's dive straight in. So as I said, we have nine minutes. I'm just going to start the clock here. So our nine minutes starts now. So question one, who is your ideal client and what's the biggest challenge they face? Well, my, my ideal client uh, are business owners in some sort of partnership. So often it could be family-owned businesses, father-son, mother-daughter, some combination of that, siblings, cousins. Uh, there's a lot at stake and there's a partnership that people generally want to preserve. It doesn't have to be family-owned people. Um, could be just business partnerships where people are doing business together and and there's some sort of complication going on and they're not exactly sure how to solve it. And so um, the biggest challenge that I find with these business owners is that they're not on the same page with their partner and they don't know how to get on the same page so that they can move forward. And what I found is that it often is a breakdown in clarity, communication and trust that is that number one roadblock that people face. And, and so, um, and sometimes they don't realize that that's what the challenge is. They just know that business isn't as much fun as it used to be. They start daydreaming about doing other things. Maybe family members or friends complain because they're preoccupied or never have energy, that kind of thing. Oftentimes there can be like a breakdown in health. And, and so the challenge starts in the business, but then it rapidly ripples out. Right, yeah, it spills out. And as you say, it sounds like there's, sounds like there's a lot more effect on the personal life and all the relationships around, as you say, around the business, which if you're merely an employee or uh, in, a, in a more professional partnership, that would be less so the issue. I mean, as I said, business people are still people in business, but as you said, it's all the more so when the family and friends are, are more involved, right? Okay, very interesting stuff. So just have uh, seven minutes left there on the clock, but so to question number two, what are some of those common mistakes people make when trying to solve or trying to address that problem that you're talking about? Yes. Well, again, I described it sometimes. It's almost like people feel like they're behind a herd of buffalo and every, anything they want to do to resolve things feels tricky or risky. And, and so the common mistakes, oddly enough, it's one of two things. It's either ignoring the problem or it's focusing on it too much. Uh, so in the ignoring the problem, it is sort of like that buffalo herd up in front and, and they're just trying to make do right, trying to get along, do their workarounds, that kind of thing. And, and they might start to see some of their self-care go, the, like we talked about, like the stress starts to ripple out. They might be drinking more than they like, giving up exercise, mm -hmm. not having very much leisure time. It's having an effect, but they're just trying to plot along. Um, the other side of it, the biggest mistake that I see is that they focus a lot on the problem, right? And so they go in, they're going to fix the problem. And, and it typically goes in a cycle because they'll try something. Maybe there's an eruption or big withdrawal. And everyone goes to their separate corners for a while. And, 
And so that kind of cycle just repeats itself until the, the resignation may fit in. And, and so is that kind of focusing too much um, instead of focusing on what they want. Right. Um, and so uh, I don't remember what your next question might be, so I'll stop there and see <laughs> what comes well, next. It, it, we're just coming up on five minutes to go, uh, but question three is, is similar to that. It links in nicely with what's one valuable free action or approach that the audience can implement that'll help with that issue. So either, as you say, they're ignoring it or they're spending way too much focus on it. So how, how can they address it in a very proactive but positive or optimistic manner? Yeah, well, as in so many things, the very first step is to take a step back and right. to, to widen the view on it. I call it dwell in possibility. And, right. and it's this idea <laughs> really of focusing on what they want, not on what the problems are and how it's limiting them or trying to ignore it, right? But it's always this kind of cloud. And so the, the free action that I would recommend for people is to spend time visualizing what they want that partner relationship to look like, what they want their day at the office um, when people can go to the office, right? But what they want those interactions to look like, to feel like, to sound like, um, and then to visualize actually graded improvement in it. And they don't need to know the how exactly, but if they can start to imagine things improving, that can go a long, long way because the first change occurs in the theater of the mind. And the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. And so when we can imagine the solutions that we want, we have gone a long ways to creating the solutions that we want. Outstanding stuff. And I love that. I love that dwelling, dwelling in the possible, because as you said, it just flips it into positive. It flips it into things that you have control over as well. And it gives that lovely clarity of the clarity of knowing when things are on that trajectory of getting better, when you're, you're clearly, ah, no, I'm closer to that than I was before. So brilliant stuff. So with that in mind, and three minutes to go there, uh, what is one valuable free resource that you could direct people to that will help with that, uh, that process, with that issue? Yes, yeah, so um, I, I have created a quick start guide and I've named it Tiptoe No More. Because uh, that is, name. of course, what we see is people <laughs> being kind of careful. And, On the eggshells, so, yeah. <laughs> it, it goes through my seven uh, simple yet powerful steps, um, and mindset being one of them, understanding signature strengths and what we bring to the table, and, and creating really that, that space for people to be themselves and to do their own work. So the the... It's called the Quick Start Guide, Tiptoe No More, how to have what you want from your business, even if your partner wants something else. And so that's available on my website, nancyyonker.com forward slash guide. And it's Nancy Yonker, it's J-O-N-K-E-R.com. The proper German spelling, excellent. <laughs> but that, no, that, that's exactly, it's a great place to start. We're trying to resolve some of those issues. It's brilliant stuff. So just with uh, just two minutes left to go, what's one question I should have asked you that will be great value to the audience? Uh, I think the, the question that's worth asking is why audacious leaders MO? Uh, because... I, I had to come to terms with why did I choose that, right? And um, so what I have discovered as an entrepreneur and what I've learned from other business owners is that it takes some real audacity to push forward, to get out of our comfort zone, to own a business, to do what's necessary, and to show up as our authentic selves, Right, because you know, Brene Brown talks about brave leaders. Um, I talk about audacious leaders because uh, being authentic and vulnerable and still knowing how to lead from that position uh, is, is a really important thing, I think. And when I was leading a group for audacious women, we came up with the tagline audacious, gracious, and tenacious. <laughs> and I think actually that sums it up really well. We're not talking about being audacious in a brash kind of way, but it's actually speaking about what's true 
And when you're resolved to do that, you can actually be very gracious. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we all need that tenacious aspect to our behavior when we're, when we're working in any kind of a business. And then I'll just finish up here with the MO part, the modus operandi. When we know our signature strengths, when we know our style of getting work done and, and can really embrace that and run with it, then we can also create a culture where people are free to be themselves. And what I find is that where there are issues of conflict or so on, it depersonalizes the conflict when people know their styles. Mm. Uh, you and I were talking earlier about different assessment tools and uh, different personality ones, but the, the one I use is actually about how people instinctively solve problems, mm. uh, how their mental energy is arranged, and it helps them know how to be more efficient in the day, but also creates that space for using others' strengths as well as their own. Fantastic, fantastic. And you're right. I think, you know, audacious is a great word for it because it, it sums up that idea of bravery that people can, people fall into that. It's not comfortable, but it's that just gut reaction of anger or disappointment or all of those sort of less helpful emotions. But it, it takes, it does take a certain level of bravery, bravery or audacity to actually confront the problem, but in a humane way, in a loving way, almost. Uh, that that moves you through that, as you say, and that that's yes. that's very interesting stuff. So it's brilliant stuff. Thank you, thank you so much for being on the show, Nancy. Oh, you're um, welcome, Al. All, all links fun. will be, of course, below the video uh, and in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast. So super stuff. All right. Well, hope to talk to you again soon, and best of luck. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>